Hi, beautiful souls. Today's story is about run, man of excellence, run. <laughs> and I wonder whether you think, what will this be about? So man of excellence is actually a racehorse. <laughs> that was his full name. And this happened, oh, many, many, I think it must have been about three or four, three, three decades ago. I don't know. And um, my dad decided to go horse riding. And I thought, oh, wouldn't it be wonderful if I go with him? And when we arrived at the stables, there's this horse kicking, like really kicking at the stable sides. And everyone was walking in with caution and now they're starting to saddle up. And I'm like, what? Now they bring out the horse and my nerves are like, I think like I was in another, on another planet. And in order to play for time, I said to my dad, oh, why don't you mount the horse first? And then let me just check out what his rhythm is like and whether, you know, how to, to do it. Because I don't know much about horse riding. And so my dad and in the little circle around and around they go. And I'm like, oh, I still don't have courage. But anyway, he says, no, nope, all is well. You get up now and off we go. So he gets onto his horse. I get onto man of excellence. And now they open the gate. And this horse starts to rear. And I'm like, I really don't have the guts to nudge it to go forward. I am so scared. And I decided to ask one of the grooms to just lead the horse out. And he says, okay, he'll lead the horse out because once we leave the yard, everything will be fine. And I trust him. <laughs> and it was much better. Now we're starting to walk and I'm like, oh, it's a beautiful horse. I love it. And, and I'm really in a good space. Then my dad says, oh, let's trot a little bit. And that goes very well. And I ask him, I said, now, since it's a racehorse, will the horse run away with me? Absolutely not. Even racehorses needs to be nudged a little bit to go. And again, I'm very calm. And now we start to canter, which the Americans called, uh, call loping. And I'm like, mm, for somebody that can't really ride, it's, it's not too bad. I can manage, and the next minute, <laughs> and away he goes, and this horse <laughs> decides to run, and there's no ways that it wants to stop at the end of the felt, and I decided that since I'm not an, a rider, one leave alone a good rider, uh, I best decide whether this horse is going to go left or right, because the worst that can happen is the 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 horse goes one direction and my body goes in and you know, like I lean towards the, the one side and the horse goes uh, to, the, to the other direction. And I'm on a total unfamiliar farm. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a farm with very small camps and fields and, and things like that. So every now and then we at a T-junction and then I have to decide, left, right. I can't even see where there's fences and gates. But I just keep my wits and I decide, okay, just breathe into this. Way at the back, my dad is like, hmm, horses don't really run away. So surely this horse will stop now, now. And that doesn't happen. So after a while, he still sees like, oh my word, no, no horse in sight. So he looks down, he sees there's no footprints of mine on the floor and the ground. So he says, well, then she's still on top. So about a kilometer of me maneuvering this horse that's in total runaway mode um, goes by. And now I'm thinking, I'm trying to stop it. No, it doesn't want to. I pull both reins. Then I re remember that when we were children, they said, pull just one rein. And I pull one rein and there me and the horse are looking face to face. Well, me with one eye looking at the horse, but the horse keeps going. And nothing works. Now we up to like almost like the two kilometer mark. And again, I try everything. Now I'm thinking 
this is really getting serious. And I look to my left hand side and I see that there's thick bushes of uh, Paul Jackson uh, trees. And I thought, I am just going to close my eyes. I am going to grind, like lock my jaw and I'm going to take that horse like into, into those bushes until he stops. Gosh, and it's just bush, 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 but the horse doesn't stop. It just keeps going. Now I'm back on the track. I know that there's boulders, like concrete boulders to my right. There's absolutely no ways that um, I can control this runaway horse. My dad is thinking best not to, to, to come after me because then both horses will think that they're in a race and that will just make matters worse. So I'm totally on my own. And this is the part where I think, <laughs> you know, when you run out of options, anything is better than nothing. So I see that Netflix have just launched a movie called God's Favorite Idiot. Now, I think I would have thought they would make that movie for me. But that vacancy is now full. Because what I then decided to do is, is like to lean forward and with my hands cover the horse's eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and still the horse went non-stop. Now, to you who don't know, basically that's like the worst I could have been, not because the horse couldn't see, but when you do that, your body moves forward, and that is actually an instruction for the horse to go even faster. So, round about the three-kilometer mark, that horse got tired. And of course, I've got, I was full of adrenaline. And um, eventually the horse slowed down, got so like I could calm it down and get off. And now I wait and I wait. And there in the far distance, I see my dad comes gently riding like a little dressage person, all in control, not a sweat, not a worry. <laughs> And I am like all shaky and shivery and wobbly at the knees. I asked the upstairs department, why are they bringing that memory back for me? Because I've totally forgotten about it. Um, and they say that all of us in what is happening in the world right now, we will be in a uh, almost like in a runaway situation where the world events are just running away in one direction and we need to understand what is within our means to do. You know when that horse ran away with me I really thought we're going to run to the end of the world which we didn't. He stopped after about uh, three kilometers. So I asked the upstairs department, why did this story come into my, um, why did they bring the story back for me? Because I totally forgot about it. And they said that that is a symbol, that kicking horse in the stable is actually the, um, the symbol of how the the, the, that 1% of people that are trying to control and do harm towards humanity, how they are currently feeling. They are kicking and screaming and making a lot of noise so that nobody wants to come closer. And yes, they are retreating, just like the horse retreated before it actually got led forward. And once they are released, they're going to run. <laughs> they're going to run like there's no tomorrow because they know what they've been up to. They're very, very aware. So where does it leave you and I? Because we, I mean, we're not here to fight them over there. We are here and what can I do? And the first thing that we can do is to actually breathe deep wherever we are. Breathe deep, like up until like below your navel and out again. Because just by breathing, we calm our own bodies. And when we are calm, we no longer release energy that feeds them. Isn't that just magnificent that we can have such a simple and gentle um, instruction to follow? 
that one thing, if you can do that one thing, you are standing in the power of light that is actually contributing towards humanity, holding the line. Now, every time I say holding the line, spirit comes for me. And what um, they also say is, just imagine that you and someone, just one or two of your best friends are interlocking your arms. You stand still in that moment, express no fear, breathe deep and just say, I am holding the line. And that is such a powerful contribution for the team called Light. Thank you for that. Stand still and know that you are fearless. There is no need to subscribe. And if you must follow someone, follow your own heart.